In this video, I'm looking at showing how to perform forward kinematics on a robot with three degrees of freedom. The particular robot we're looking at is something similar to this one, where we have one rotational joint where the robot arm can spin around, and then two pivotal joints that can move the actual robot arm itself. Forward kinematics is the mathematics of being able to find where, given those three initial conditions of where these angles sit, so this the angle of rotation, the angle of elevating this part of the arm, and the angle of rotating that part of the arm, gets the end point, which is being cut off in this diagram, where it's located in three-dimensional space. Now, if we think about this in a three-dimensional problem, life can become rather difficult. So it's a lot easier if we think about this problem in terms of two dimensions. So if we have a look at bringing in two dimensions and actually have a look at the top view of our robot arm and a side view of our robot arm. So if we look at the top view, that's just going to be the rotation around the base, okay? So the theta one that I've got here matches this theta one here. That's the rotation of the robot arm itself as it revolves around the base. This angle could be anywhere within a 360 degree uh, angle. And that would give us our X and Y plane, our um, horizontal distances, where the end of the arm, known as the tool tip, ends up in the two-dimensional plane of the XY plane, horizontally. The side view gives us these two rotations here, theta 2 and theta 3, our second and third angles. So we can use this to determine where the tool tip ends up in vertical space, in the Z plane. Forward kinematics uses the fact that if we know the lengths of the arms, how tall the base is above the ground, and our three angles, we can actually calculate x, y, and z. To do that, we need to start having a look at the side plane, the side view, because this is what tells us what, how tall it is, but it can also tell us how far the tooltip is away from the base, giving us this distance here, d1, which matches this distance here, d1 in this diagram. And then that we can use our trigonometry to find x and y. In this video, I'm looking at a particular example where the two lengths of the arm are exactly the same, L1 equals L2, and they're both 155 millimeters long. And D2, the height of the base, is 120 millimeters. I'm also going to have my initial angles, theta 1, theta 2, and theta 3, being 3 being 60 degrees for theta 1, 30 degrees for theta 2, and 140 degrees for theta 3. So let's start having a look at how to actually do these calculations now that we know our initial conditions. The first thing I'm going to look at is calculating the height z. Because z is our vertical height, we also want to start looking at all the other vertical heights we've got. So we've got the vertical height d2 of the base, we've got the vertical height of the, where the joint created by L2, L1 ends up, and we've got the loss of height given to us by this part of the arm going back down again. So that's what we're going to look at first. To do that, we know theta 2, we know theta 3, which comes all the way through here, that's theta 3. We're going to need to know these two angles, which I've marked as theta 4 and theta 5. Theta 4 we can easily work out because this is a right angle in here theta 4 is just going to be the three angles in a right angle triangle add up to 180 degrees, so 180 minus our theta 2, which we know to be 30 degrees, minus our 90 degree angle that's in the corner, which gives us a theta 4 of being 60 degrees. From this, we can now calculate theta 5, because it's just going to be theta 3 minus of theta 4 because theta 4 and theta 5 joined together create theta 3. So theta 3 was 140 degrees, and theta 4 we've just worked out as being 60 degrees, so theta 5 is 80 degrees. This is all the information that's given to us by our initial conditions that we can pull out straight away. So now we can start looking at actually finding our height. To do this, I'm first going to look at finding the height given to us by moving theta 2, raising this first joint in the arm, and giving us some initial height. 
So that's going to be that triangle there. So I'm going to redraw it out and we'll have a look at what we know about this triangle. We know it's a right angle. We know that this in here is 30 degrees. We know that this length here is 155 millimeters. And we are going to want to have this height, which I've already labeled off as D3. We also know the fact that this angle here is 60 degrees, but we already know this one, so that'll give us enough information to calculate our height. So having a look at this, we've got our, based on the angle, our opposite side, and we've got our hypotenuse side. So opposite and hypotenuse, that means we're going to use sine. So sine theta is the opposite side divided by the hypotenuse. We can then put in our information, sine 30 is our D3, which we're trying to find, divided by our hypotenuse of 155 millimeters. Multiplying that 155 up over to here, we have 155 times sine 30. It will give us D3. Putting that into our calculator, we have that D3 comes out as 77.5 millimeters. So now we've got some initial height that we know. We now need to work out how much we've lost by pivoting this next joint down. So if we come over and have a look at this triangle, which is looking at that joint, we can draw it out and put in the information we know about it. So we know that this side is 155 millimeters. We know it's a right angle. And we've worked out theta 5, which was this angle up in the corner here, to be 80 degrees. And because we're trying to find out how much we're losing in height, we're going to find out this distance here. Because I've already got a D3, D4, and D5 labeled, I'm going to label this D6 just so I can call it something. Going through that calculation, we can work out the fact that based on this angle, this is now our adjacent side, this is our hypotenuse, so we're going to use the cos ratio. Cos theta is the opposite over the hypotenuse. Put in our information, cos of 80 degrees is our adjacent side, D6, which we don't know, divided by our hypotenuse of 155 degrees. Multiplying that up this side, so we get D6 all on its own, 155 times cos 80 will give us D6. Putting in D6 into our calculator, we get 26.92 millimeters in height that we're losing by rotating this arm down a little bit. Now we've got everything we need to know about our height wise to find Z because we've got our D3, we've got our little D6 that we're losing, and we've also got D2 coming up here. So now we can find Z because it's just going to be um, our D2, adding on our D3, and then minusing off our D6 because we've lost some height. So we've gained height, gained height, lost a little bit. So we've got plus, and we've got a minus down the end of D6. Putting this information in, we're going to have D2 was 120 millimeters. We're going to add on D3 of 77.5 millimeters, and we're going to subtract of D6 of 26.92 millimeters, giving us a vertical height of 154.42 millimeters. So now we have worked out how tall the tool tip is above the ground, how high it is above the ground. All we need to do now is work out X and Y. Now I said before, to work out X and Y, we need to know how far the tool tip has ended away from the base. To do this, we need to know what I called D1 earlier, which down here in this diagram is this distance of the arm of the tool tip from the base, which is exactly what we want. That's why I've called it D1 up in this diagram up here, because it lines up with this diagram down here. In this case, we want to do a very similar thing to what we did to find Z, to find our height. But instead of looking at the height of our triangles, we want to find out the width of them, how wide they go. Because putting those two lengths together, D4 and D5, we will end up finding D1. 
So to do that, we need to get, again go back to our triangles. We've got D4 up here, and we've got D5 down here. So I'm going to do the calculation for D4 first. It is now the adjacent side of our triangle. So because I've got the adjacent side, I'm going to use the hypotenuse we've already given. We've got our cos rule to work out D4. So we've got cos theta is going to be adjacent over hypotenuse cos of our angle, which was 30 degrees. Our adjacent side is the D4 we're trying to calculate. Our hypotenuse is the 155 millimeters. Multiplying that 155 up so we get D4 on its own. We can now work out our D4 to be 134.23 millimeters. Going and having a look at this triangle here for D5, it's now the opposite to that angle. So we've got opposite and hypotenuse, so I'm going to use sine. Sine theta is opposite over hypotenuse. Putting in the information we know, sine of 80 degrees is, 150, uh, is our D5 over 155. Multiplying that 155 up to the other side gives me a distance for D5. Putting that into our calculator, we can find out that D5 is 152.65 millimeters. So now, adding these two together, we can find that total length of D1. So D1 is going to be 134.23 plus our D5 of 152.65. So our D4 plus our D5 giving me a D1 of 286.88 millimeters. So that's just how far the arm is away from the base, no matter how far it's rotated around that base. Going now and actually working out X and Y, I'm going to come over here. I'm just going to draw up a rough diagram of this. So we've got our base, or our arm coming out from our base. We've got our distance horizontally, which is X. We've got our distance vertically, which is Y. So we all know that the fact that D1 on this triangle is 286.88 millimeters. And as we have a right angle triangle to find X and Y, we can use our trigonometry. Based on where the angle is, X will be our adjacent side, Y will be our opposite side, and of course Z1 is our hypotenuse. So to find X first, because I've got adjacent hypotenuse, I'm going to use cos. So you can have cos theta will give me adjacent over hypotenuse. Put in our information, cos of 60 degrees is the x, which we don't know, divided by our d1 of 286.88. Multiplying this up over this side, we have 286.88 times cos 60 will give us x all on its own giving us, when we put this into our calculator, an x of 143.44 millimeters. Doing the same for y, but now because we have opposite and hypotenuse, we're going to use sine. So sine theta is opposite over hypotenuse. Sine of 60 degrees will be the opposite side, which we have y and our hypotenuse of 286.88. Again, multiplying that up, we have 286.88 times sine 60 will give us y, meaning we have a y of 248.44 millimeters. And there we have it. We now have x, y, and z. To do it, remember, we started off with our three-dimensional problem. 
turn it into a two-dimensional problem looking at top down of just the arm rotating around the base and then the two other two angles lifting and moving the arm vertically having a look at drawing out that side view in more detail we can look at our height by looking at the height of any triangles we can find in there we can find that distance away from the arm by doing the same thing which enables us to have a look at the distance away from the base using theta 1 to find x and y and that will give us a final tooltip location the so final tooltip location if we were going to write that in an x y z coordinate it would give us an x of 143.44 a y of 200 and 40, 248.44 and a Z of 154.42 and that would be one way of writing it as a three-dimensional coordinate if we were caring about our actual location in a three-dimensional coordinate space which is quite a common thing to do when performing forward kinematics.